begin with the invocation. Eternal and loving God, by your grace and with the encouragement of your divine Son, we are gathered joyfully to celebrate the union of Taylor and of Heidi. Let your spirit be truly present in our worship and may this service firmly seal their love while reminding them and us of your self-giving, all-conquering love. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you may be seated. We have then the admonition, uh, these uh, familiar words frequently heard at weddings. We are gathered here in the sight of God and of his church to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy marriage. God has both established and sanctified marriage and has promised to bless therein all who love and trust in him and who seek to give him their faithful worship and service for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. The union of husband and wife and heart, body and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy and for help and comfort given to one another in prosperity and adversity. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into lightly, but reverently and in accordance with which the purposes for which it was instituted by God. And fittingly, then, we hear words from Scripture, God speaks of love and of marriage. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 14. 1. If I speak in tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when, we, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abides, these three, but the greatest of these is love.
as we begin the wedding message, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A threefold cord is not easily broken. Looking out at the audience, it is, well, hard to imagine, I suppose, all the stories that you have been a part of with the people gathered here in this midst. And it's become a little bit of a tradition of mine to have you guys turn and to see the faces of the people who have blessed you, the people who love you, and who have shared all these stories with you. So if you would maybe turn toward the audience. These are your people. The people who love you, not only who love you, but who love this person that you are marrying. And if they would tell stories, some of the stories, while well, they would be, well, they would be funny, and these people would be able to easily, easily make you laugh. Some of the stories, if they told them, they would, they would be sad, and there would be tears, and maybe some of the empty places in the pews where, well, people who wish they could be here, but for some reason aren't, maybe some of these stories would, would make us cry. Some of the stories, well, the face might be a little bit flushed and maybe they would be embarrassing. And some of the stories maybe you would want them to tell because in it you're the champion or you're the hero and it's just an awesome story. These are your people. People who, and maybe this becomes a bit of theme, who have shared the stories in history and who are now gathered toward this day to witness this story, where two people become one. And these people too also, well, share, not just well, in the past stories, but they will write stories with you in, into the future. What a collection of stories we have on this day. And if you wanna turn back, that, that's okay. I actually have maybe an example, one, one story, um, Ten years ago, I came to Humboldt, Iowa, and Heidi, it's been really good knowing you for, well, the time that I've known you, and you seem to be a fine, gifted, talented woman, very good in every way, and so Taylor, I'll tell the story about you. <laughs> it was ten years ago, and it was confirmation class, and I can't quite remember how it sort of went, but it might have been we were talking after, it might have been it was a test question where I put something that you might change in class, and so I was very new to confirmation, very new to probably discipline, and the comment, in, it was either we were talking or it was on a test, but the comment was, you need to get a hold of the, of the class or of the kids, <laughs> and it was true. It was perfect. And so you have a story told in the past that becomes told on this day. And I'm hoping maybe to script a future. At some point, and I'm not saying there will be, I'm not trying to influence, I'm not trying to say anything, but if I see you in the grocery store, at some point in the future, if there's kids <laughs> and they're climbing the shelves or something like that, I want to be able just to look at you and maybe wink or point and to have you here in your heads. You need to get a hold of these kids. <laughs> a story in the past connected to this day that leads into the future. Now, think of all of these stories in the past here on this day and the many things in the future. Not only those that this people, you actually have over here, and I think this is, this is fantastic. It's a unity braid, but there's a, a cross here, and it represents the husband and the wife, and also the Lord. If it's not threefold, then it's only twofold, and I, I've heard, well, I heard there was a, there was a professor who was sitting in the front of a in the front of a classroom, and he wrote on the board. I'll, I'll enunciate it uh, slowly. 
woman without her man is nothing. And so those words were written up on a board, and the professor said, go and put uh, punctuation with it. And the men, the men, they all got together, and they were happy, they were excited, and they said, we know how to do it. The men got together, and they put woman, comma, without her man, comma, is nothing. And it was high fives all around. The men were, were, were excited with the punctuation, and, and, the, and they sat down, and then the, the women came forward, and they did the same thing. Uh, they were over here, uh, and they thought of a little bit, and, and, and they, they rewrote it. They said, woman, comma, without her, comma, man is nothing. <laughs> Whichever you prefer, there might be, though, division if it's just two chords. And the thing that is so joyous, then, about this day is this place, marriage, is the place of the third chord. This is God's design and God's plan. And indeed, a chord of three strands is not easily broken. And the reminder then in marriage is that, well, this is God's plan and he's created this and this is indeed very good. Not only that, but we have, we have the cross sitting above us and we have a reminder that at times we are sinful and this is difficult and sometimes it is the people that are the closest to us that we hurt the most. And his forgiveness is indeed the solution for that. And in that, we are very blessed to walk forward, not just today as two, but as one. For all the stories in the past, and for all the stories in the future, let's, let's unite them now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. With that, I will have the both of you, if you could step forward. And if you want to turn toward each other. Into this holy estate, you now come to be united and that all men may know your mutual consent and holy marriage to have been sincerely and freely given, it rests upon you to declare in the presence of God and this Christian community the sincere intent that you both have. And we will begin to Taylor. Taylor, while you today, and until you are separated from her by death, have Heidi to be your wife. While you enter into this marriage according to the will of God, while you love, comfort, honor, and serve her, and only be faithful to her in all the changes of life and health as God gives you the strength and ability, then answer, I will. Now to you, Heidi. Heidi, will you today and until you are separated from him by death have Taylor to be your husband? Will you enter into this marriage according to the will of God? Will you love, comfort, honor, and serve him Will you be faithful to him in all the changes of life and health, as God gives you the strength and the ability? Then answer, I will. We now have the exchange of vows. Taylor, if you would repeat after me. I, Taylor, in the presence of God, and this Christian community, take you, Heidi, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. And I pledge you my faithfulness until death parts of. Now you, Heidi. I, Heidi. In the presence of God, presence of God. And, this and this Christian community, take you, Taylor, take you, to, be my husband, to be my husband, to have and to hold, have and to hold. from this day forward, 
for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. And I pledge you my faithfulness until death parts of us. consented to be joined together in marriage and have given themselves to each other by their solemn pledges and have declared the same before God and this Christian community. I pronounce them to be husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and of man. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. And we'll continue then with uh, the song as well as the unity bracket that we had referenced before. Shame. 
life that we built. I'll kiss you goodnight and say I love you still. We have a quick prayer, and then we will hear the Lord's Prayer uh, as it is sent. We pray, O oh, Father of love, shower your grace upon Taylor and Heidi, who have come before you to pledge themselves to live together in marriage. Grant them the strength and patience, the affection and understanding. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless them according to your will and for their mutual growth. All this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
I now have the privilege of presenting to you Mr. and Mrs. Taylor and Heidi Peterson. 